Hello dear friends of the bass, I'm Toby, this is the Harley Benton PB50 and I'm going to take it apart. Let's go! When we are taking a base apart like this, you're getting a pretty good impression of the build quality of that base. So let's start uh, at the headstock with the tuners. These are quite good, they feel smooth and I had no issues with holding the tuning on this base. It's a bit surprising because they look very similar to the ones on the Sire V3, which weren't that good. Let's move on to the fretwork. The fretwork is quite good on this base. Uh, there are maybe two or three frets which are a little lower than their neighbors, but I don't think it will be much of a problem with the setup. There's even a fall off towards the end of the fingerboard starting around the 12th fret. So I think pretty good fret leveling for such an inexpensive instrument. The fingerboard edges and the fret ends are also quite comfortable. There are no sharp edges uh, and you don't hurt yourself when you're sliding up and down the neck. The one thing that wasn't quite good was the polishing of the frets. I think they weren't polished at all. Um, so I'm going to do that when I put the base back together. It's no surprise that the wood for this neck is a flat sawn piece of maple. You'll get that with most lower priced bases and I haven't had any problems with any flat sawn neck yet, so I don't think that's a problem. Finally for the neck I had a look at the fretboard radius. It's a 12 inch radius, which is I think the case on most Harley Benton bases. Moving on to the body, or at least the attachment of the neck to the body, there's this neck plate. It's a simple four hole neck plate 
uh, with this kind of plastic washer underneath it. I don't know why they put these on. I think these make the base look really cheap, so I'm going to leave the plastic thing off uh, once I'm putting it back together. Let's have a look at the neck pocket. I think it has a quite clean routing and the neck fits really good. It's almost too tight. It looks like they're doing the final routing of the neck plate after finishing the base um, as there has no finish in the neck pocket left. What you can also see at the edge of the neck pocket is that this base has quite a thick finish. Moving on to the pickup. The pickup sits on a nice thick piece of foam, but the pickup routing isn't super clean. You can see some wood shavings on the bottom where they simply sprayed the red paint over, but you don't see that once the pickup is installed, so I think that's fine. You can also see that there's no shielding in the pickup cavity. It's similar with the electronics cavity. The routing isn't too clean, there's no shielding in the cavity other than the metal control plate. And the pots and the capacitor are pretty cheap parts, but they work fine and you can easily change them if you want something better. Finally, there's the jack plate with an equally cheap jack, which works fine. The jack plate isn't quite bent in the right radius, so there's a little gap between the plate and the body in the middle. I'm trying to fix that when I'm putting the base back together. Overall, I'm quite pleased with the build quality of this base. It's one of the cheapest bases you can get and yet the build quality is not bad at all. So if you're looking for a vintage wipe on a budget, this base may be something for you. So that's it for today. There'll be another video on putting the base back together and adding some small modifications to it. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions left on this base, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Thank you for watching and see you the next time.